The coronavirus pandemic is hitting the entire world as it continues to spread, but a population that's being overlooked is the homeless. As businesses and other segments of society close down, many food banks are unable to provide the services they once did to homeless populations throughout the world. My next guest is the community engagement officer for New York City Relief, and he's here tonight to tell us what his organization is doing to aid and support the vulnerable homeless population in New York City. Nick Teorio joins us from Manhattan. Nick, thanks for being with us. Now, the homelessness has it's reached the highest levels in, in New York City since the Great Depression. New York City saw a 2.8 percent increase in the population between 2017 and 2018, with 78,676 people reported homeless last year. Now, how many people do you normally feed and help in a given week, Nick? It's thousands. In fact, uh, we had an outreach today that served over 800 people in a period of three hours. And mm -hmm. one of those people, one of the people that we serve every week is a man named George. Uh, George came to us yesterday at our relief in Chelsea Park, which is on the west side of New York City. And he's been coming to be with us for years, but yesterday he was so surprised that we were still serving. And more than anything, he came not just for the food or the hygiene kits that we'd serve, but he came for the relationship that he thought wouldn't be there because so many soup kitchens, so many shelters are closing. And we don't begrudge outreaches that are not yeah. happening, but we're out there serving every day like we normally would. Mm. Now, New York City Relief has been providing uh, food, as you mentioned, uh, uh, hygiene kits to the homeless community since 1989. You have mobile units that are set up in five locations seven times a week. How are you able to continue serving this community in light of this coronavirus, particularly if you have a shelter in place order, as de Blasio has been discussing? Well, Raymond, I think this gets to the heart of what we've what we've seen over the last week. We have to balance social distancing with social responsibility. And we're mm -hmm. called not just to serve when it's convenient, not just to serve when we have the capability of serving. We have to serve no matter what. And, I, and we feel like at New York City Relief, we're meeting people on the streets every day that need our services more than ever. Uh, yesterday, we met another friend, Jose, who just came from Puerto Rico. He came here looking for work. He came at the worst time. Um, but we're, we're out there serving people like Jose and George because we know that although the need is going up, people still have to be given the food and shelter mm -hmm. that it requires. We don't provide shelters ourselves. Like you said, we have seven mobile outreach vehicles that go out throughout New York City and New Jersey and, every week. Yeah, and time was, Nick, you would set up tables and really create a sense of community where you're interacting with these people, your volunteers interact with them. You're not able to do that anymore. It's basically a uh, uh, pass-through service, right? You can't spend that kind of time. But your work depends on volunteers. Are you having trouble getting people to volunteer now in this crisis? So we have a we have a full complement of volunteers. We feel like over the next few weeks and months, we're going to have people who can serve. Our focus right now are the financial contributions we need to keep going. Right as the demand goes up, we're going to need to fill in the void that other soup kitchens aren't willing to do. And so our main mm -hmm. challenge right now is not so much volunteers. We've got the staff. We've got the teams that can go out. We need people to make gener generous gifts so that our staff who are willing to take on the risk, right? It, we're not doubting that it's a risk to go out and serve people, but we've set up mm -hmm. precautions that allow us to serve the homeless. Right now we need generous people, whether they're New Yorkers, whether they're from other parts of the country, we need Americans to help us feed the, the largest homeless population in the, in, the, in the city, excuse me, in the, in the mm -hmm. country. You, you were giving some t t statistics at the beginning. What you didn't mention and what most people don't know is not only are the numbers of homeless going up, the percentage of people who die on the streets going up as well. Last year, 39 mm. percent of the homeless population died because of their circumstance on the street. That's what we're trying to really draw back and try to trim back. And we feel like here yeah. in New York City right now, there's a great opportunity for people to give and serve. Even if they want to keep their distance, we're willing to go out and serve and we want people to come alongside mm -hmm. us by making financial contributions. What are the homeless telling you about life on the streets during this pandemic? 
there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of misinformation. A lot of people who are homeless have been betrayed by the city. They've been betrayed by shelters because the shelter system, frankly, is not safe. We are allowed to listen to what's happening on the street, and people who we were serving yesterday and today are telling us there's a lot of anxiety and fear. People don't know what to believe from from leaders, from people who are in the city. But when they come mm -hmm. to be with us, when they come to get a hot meal with us, which is one of the last hot meals they'll get in a day or maybe they'll get in a week, they can have a community experience. Even though we're not setting up tables and chairs as we normally would, yeah. they're still able to be with friends. And we feel like what we're hearing on the street are people are anxious, but we are trying to relieve not just their suffering from a lack of uh, nourishment, we're trying to relieve the anxieties and the fears that are naturally all around us. And I, I want to say that the Lord will use any crisis to help bring good out of it. And we're already seeing the fruits of our work by the many th yeah. hundreds of people that have come to get our meals, but we need more people to help us get those meals by making financial gifts to us. Nick, I only have two minutes. New York City Relief also lists among its services uh, prayer. And how important yes. is it that these people on the street and, and, and the volunteers and the members of your team pray together. And uh, how do you see God in others in this work that your organization does? Well, I think the most important thing to remember is we are a faith-based organization, and the gospel is the cornerstone of everything we do. And we believe that all of our guests, all of our volunteers, everyone that we interact with has an inherent and an intrinsic dignity and beauty. And we feel like mm. this is a crisis that has come upon us. No one chose to be in the midst of this, but we feel like this is a time for the gospel to be lived out. And that's why we're still going out. That's why we're still serving. And we want people to join us as much as they can, as much as they feel called to serve with us. They can either by coming out with us, but right now we're focused on people coming alongside us as financial contributors and people who okay, can Okay, where can they help, Nick? Uh, I'm almost out of time. Where can they go to help? New York City Relief, all spelled out, all one word, dot org slash donate. New York City Relief dot org slash donate. They can come alongside us, make a gift, mm. and be part of this great story that we're trying to share with everybody. Nick, thanks so much for the time, and God bless you and your important work uh, on those streets. I know it's not easy. Uh, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you, Raymond. Mm -hmm.